Hello, I'm uh, Manikam Kumaravel. I'm a radiologist. Uh, I go by Nix Kumaravel just because it's an easier version of my first name. Today I would like to talk about one of our procedures which is platelet-rich plasma injections. Plasma is a component of your blood. It is pretty much the maximum part of your blood is basically plasma and then you have solid components to it like red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets together. So what we're trying to lean on is to try and figure out how plasma will be able to help in healing factors when we use it in multiple parts of the body. I'm typically talking about injections into the musculoskeletal system as far as what we are concerned in doing. So this would be into muscles, into tendons, around nerves, and into joints as well. So these are multiple procedures where they're done to help you recover back from the injury in hopefully a faster way than what it normally does. So PRP is actually multiple factors put together. It's got multiple growth factors in it, multiple things which will actually speed up your process. It's your own blood which is being used for this. This is a procedure where we draw your own blood, typically about 10 to 15 cc's of blood, spin it down and get the plasma portion off it. And this is now used in treating your injuries in multiple ways, particularly with image guidance. So we're gonna be using either ultrasound or fluoroscopy or CT sometimes to actually direct where we want to place the, the, uh, the PRP or your, or your own cells to help us out. Uh, this is, since it's done under image guidance, it's very accurate about where we can place these, um, place your PRP. We create a sterile environment. We make sure that everything around us is cleaned up properly. Then we certainly can use local anesthetic as well. A local anesthetic typically is done in two forms. One is a topical spray, which is actually a cool spray that actually gives you some sensation that it takes away the edge of the pain away. And then the second part is we use a local anesthetic injection. The local anesthetic is typically lidocaine, which is one of the commonest local anesthetics that's used, and it's used to numb up only the top portion of your skin. After this, using image guidance, as I said, either ultrasound or CT or fluoroscopy, we would direct the needle into the appropriate structure that has an injury in it. And what happens at this point is to make sure there's accurate placement, we watch the imaging to guide us to get, the, get it to the correct spot. Then we would administer your PRP. One of the downsides with this procedure is the fact that we don't actually put lidocaine or any local anesthetic into the site that's being injected itself, which means to say that there is a little bit of discomfort involved in this. The reason we don't do that is because the local anesthetic, which is usually lidocaine, counteracts the, the, the benefit or the, health or the healing factors that's there in your PRP in solution. That's one of the reasons why we don't do this at all. PRP is basically, as I said, it's a spin down component from your own blood. So there is no real preparation that you need to take, except for a couple of things which you'd rather avoid if you can. One is taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. What are we talking about? We're talking about things like Advil uh, or naproxen. These are agents which will actually reduce your platelet counts and be antiplatelet in nature. And this would not be beneficial because we are harvesting your platelets. And there's also stem cell components which go along with this. So hence, we would ask you to avoid taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents for about 48 hours before you come in. Other thing which you can do is if you really want to help out is actually be well hydrated. That is another thing that'll be useful for doing this as well. Those are the minimum requirements for doing this. Other than that, there is no special requirement before you come in to have your PRP. It depends on a couple of scenarios. One of the scenarios is we can do an intervention called fenestration. What happens in this situation is, I'm talking about particularly in treatment of tendons, such as patellar tendon and Achilles tendon and sometimes plantar fascia. These are situations where we make small micro holes or mini holes into the substance of the tissue itself. When you do that, it actually incites the tissue to actually bleed a little bit because that's useful to you because it helps with the healing factor, but also sometimes weakens it a little bit. So when that happens, it's done in a controlled fashion so you don't have to worry about it, but when that happens, you should not be pushing yourself too much because you don't want to make it any worse than what you actually came in with. That's something that we need to be careful about. So, in situations based on what you come in with, we typically advise you to go back to normal activity that you actually walked in in the day, 
which is like walking around, which is absolutely fine, but would not do anything strenuous, would not put any more pressure on the structure that's being injected. So we typically ask you to have uh, a rest period for approximately about 48 hours on gentle, and sometimes up to a week or even 10 days, depending on what exactly is being done. What does this translate into? You don't have to actually have to take time off work. That is usually not required, except for sometimes when you're all the time standing on it or lifting heavy weights. You don't have to do that. So generally, you can go back to work the next day. We advise you to take some rest the same day and try to take it as gradually as you can to help you with the healing process as such. We can also discuss with your physician and then figure out where to go if you have any special uh, scenarios. So and to sum up about how much time do you need to take off, not much. Usually about 24 hours is good enough for you to get back to regular activity. There's no need to completely active, uh, modify your activity or what you started with. But at the same time, you don't want to go to strenuous activity at least for a week or 10 days because that might even put your structure that we're injecting into a dangerous situation, which we don't want to. And that's basically what it is.